Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to my unboxing and review of the Razer Orb Weaver Mechanical Keypad. When this launched, it was $130, and I don't think even the most dedicated gamers could justify a purchase of a peripheral of this kind at that price point, because for $130, you could get a full-size mechanical keyboard with backlighting. But this has undergone a series of price drops, and it's now for $67, which I think is a better price point for a peripheral of this type. Uh, it's been several years since the Nostromo launched, and the Razer's previous iteration of a keypad for gaming was the Nostromo. Logitech also has a keypad for purchase, but theirs is also getting kind of up there in age, so the Razer Orb Weaver is the most recent kind. I'm not necessarily faithful to any brands when it comes to peripherals. I'm faithful to um, quality and whatever company offers a product that meets my gaming goals at the moment. And I've been in the market for a peripheral like this. Uh, keypad was on my radar for a long time because when you think about it, you use a keyboard for everyday regular computing. Most people, when you work in offices, you have to set out a keyboard for eight hours, nine hours a day. And if you really want to separate yourself from the professional aspect of computing and get something solely dedicated for gaming and with a really cool gaming mouse, I mean, your gaming setup's complete. So, monologue over. Let's break this box open and take a look. Okay, so we have the standard Razer marketing stickers. Welcome to the Cult of Razer with additional product uh, guides and uh, product descriptions. So yeah, this will tell you about how to set it up, its compatibility with Razer Synapse, and so on and so forth. Yeah, welcome to Dakota Razer. All right, let's bring out the Razer Orb Weaver. Mechanical key type is Cherry MX Blue. There are 20 total programmable keys with a top row this time as opposed to not having a top row on the Razer Nostromo. A top row for the numbers and the ESC key. There is a space bar here and there is an eight way directional thumb pad. The wrist rest is adjustable and USB cable is not braided. Now this is curious. This is a curious addition because most other Razer peripherals do have braided USB cables. So this is pretty much it for the out of box initial impression. I'm gonna start using this and give you a more in-depth review coming up. There are three total physical adjustments you can make to the Razer Orb Weaver. First, you can pull out this bar and it allows you to rotate the wrist pad and either lock it into the up position lock it into the down position, or leave it loose and allow the pad to rotate with your palm. Next, you can press this tab and this will allow you to pull out or push in the wrist pad. Finally, there's a tab on this side that allows you to push out or pull in your thumb function area. This is pretty well constructed. There is no flex to show you. It's very rigid and durable. These mechanical keys are Cherry MX Blue, which I believe are the most common type of mechanical key switches. They are different from uh, Cherry MX Black, which is what I'm using on my keyboard right now. This is typing at full speed. So that's what it sounds like with Cherry MX Black. I think this is one of the softer sounding Cherry MX Black keyboards because usually they sound extremely loud, but I'm going to button spam. This is what it sounds like with Cherry MX Blue. On a Cherry MX Blue switch, the release point is above the actuation point. That's why you get an audible click because you get that first layer of feedback with the release point. But because of this, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny dead zone, which makes double tapping on a blue switch a little more difficult than on a black switch or a Cherry MX red switch. Um, I do believe you can get the 
um, Razor or Weaver Stealth Edition. I think that comes with Cherry MX Brown switches. I don't know how it compares in price to the uh, Razor or Weaver Regular Edition, but I don't know why they put the Cherry MX Blue Switch because uh, the Cherry MX Blue Switch is more of a typing mechanical key switch than a gaming mechanical key switch, but some people like it because this is the key switch that's found on the Razer Black Widow. Okay, moving on. Let's go on to Razer Synapse and the customization and the programmability of the Razer or Weaver. Razer's claim of one hand infinite commands in the marketing of the Razer or Weaver is very literal. So you see on the left side of Razer Synapse, you can put as many profiles as you want. So I'm going to spam some buttons and there you go. I just added another profile and boom, 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 more profiles. And all of these profiles you can set to map whatever keys you want. In my top left hand corner, I have the enter key where the S key used to be. Actually, no, I think this is where the tilde key, the console command used to be. And if you look at my hand, this is the most natural position to hold the razor or weaver with your pinky on the bottom left hand key, which is where the shift key normally is on a regular keyboard. But if you were to hold your hand in the most neutral position on the Razer or Weaver, this negates your access to the Criddle key or whatever CTRL stands for. So instead, I have my Shift key mapped to where the Caps Lock key is supposed to be on the Razer or Weaver, and I have the Criddle key mapped to where the Shift key is. And that didn't take a whole lot of time to get used to. If we move over to the side of the Razer or Weaver, there are eight possible key maps on one profile. When I press down, on the shift key that I mapped on the thumb function area on the Razer or Weaver, additional lights light up indicating that I shift profiles and there is a completely different key structure to this key map within this profile. So you can have eight key maps within one profile and infinite profiles and if you want you can map additional keys to cycle profiles and even more keys to cycle key maps so one hand infinite commands that's the prophecy coming true right there. And this nubby thing, it's an eight-way directional pad that you can map to whatever function you want, macros or whatever. And with my shift command, here I jump to key map seven. This is a macro, which I will show you in action right now. This macro is a series of buy commands for an instant purchase in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Additional features of Razer Synapse, you can have infinite macros on record. And Razer Synapse is cool because it's all over the cloud. This is not stored on your hard drive. Wherever you log into Razer Synapse, your key maps and your profiles go with you. So if you were to go to Korea or Japan or China for some reason to compete in some esports tournament because they are very big on esports over there, then you can have access to Razer Synapse and you won't have to reprogram all your commands. So the last thing I think I'm going to talk about physically relating to the Razer Orb Weeper is how cool the backlighting looks. You can set it to a constant brightness or you can select it to pulsate. So that pretty much does it for the physical functionality of the Razer Orb Weeper. Now I'm going to cut into some hand cam gameplay and talk about comfort. I'm playing a game of arms race or gun game against bots and I'm playing very erratically on purpose to give myself a reason to press more keys. The most comfortable position for me to use the orb weaver is putting it where the left side of my keyboard usually is. When I first used the orb weaver, I put it off to the side of my keyboard so that I could quickly have access to my keyboard if I needed it for something. This was very uncomfortable and it strained my thumb so much that I probably would have gotten injured if I kept using this position, so I moved my keyboard under my monitor and used the orb weaver from a normal keyboard position. I placed my palm pad in the locked up position put the wrist rest as close to the keys as possible, and allow the thumb function area to extend all the way out. From this position, I can reach all the keys easily, even the top row of numbers. You may prefer a different configuration depending on your hand size and personal play style. From an ergonomic and comfort standpoint, for me at least, I don't feel the Orb Weaver confers a big advantage over a regular keyboard. The palm pad grinds into my hand after a long period of use, and my forearm isn't able to have full rest on my gaming surface, like I would with the keyboard. I'm going to transition to a photo of my keyboard setup really quickly. I place a graffiti neoprene wrist rest at the base of my keyboard so my forearm can come to rest easier. 
and it gives me a centimeter or so additional elevation for my fingers to attack the keys. It's a close fight, but I'd have to give the narrow edge in ergonomics and comfort to a regular keyboard. In terms of performance, the Orb Weaver delivers on all of its promises. The mechanical keys are very responsive and satisfying to use. Its 100% customizability gives the gamer limitless potential to what they can do. The gamers who will benefit most from the Orb Weaver are those who play RTS, RPGs, and MOBAs because those are the games where we have the most key combinations or macros that you can program into the Orb Weaver for a one-touch execution. As well as the Orb Weaver performs, there are other peripherals that accomplish the same thing. Most gaming peripheral companies have gaming keyboards that you can program macros into, and there are gaming mice that have additional side buttons to give you more macros at your disposal. I do feel, however, that the Orb Weaver will have more functionality to aid in enthusiast level gaming. I think that for most gamers' needs, a gaming keyboard with macro functions or a gaming mouse with additional buttons will accomplish what they need but cost much less than the Orb Weaver. At the highest level, there are gamers that will get the most out of the Razer Orb Weaver's potential. Is that gamer me? Unfortunately, no. I don't play enough games that the Razer Orb Weaver shines in, so there is little advantage for me to use the Orb Weaver over a regular keyboard. So far in this review, I've talked about the Orb Weaver from more of a mechanistic standpoint and haven't given it one advantage over average gaming gear. So what is the Orb Weaver's advantage? It's something that's difficult to describe in quantifiable terms, but I'll give it a shot. The Orb Weaver's X Factor is how cool it is to use. There is no other peripheral like this that has come out recently. I did mention earlier in the video that a keyboard is something you use at work and ties you more to the day-to-day -day grind of work-related computing, but this keypad is for gaming only. For console players moving into PC gaming, having a keypad might lower the intimidation factor of learning PC controls, but I had a few hours of a learning curve moving from the keyboard to the keypad, so my advice to console players looking to move to PC is learn a regular keyboard first. For most gamers looking to get the Orb Weaver, how cool the Orb Weaver looks and feels will quite possibly be the strongest factor in making a purchase decision. The Orb Weaver is not inexpensive. I managed to get mine after a price drop on Amazon for $67. However, they sold out quickly at that price and the price rose again. In summary, the Razer Orb Weaver is a solid keypad, feels satisfying to use, and performs well. But functionally, most gamers won't find too much of an advantage over regular gaming peripherals, especially at the asking price. The biggest deciding factor in whether you should get the Oral Weaver is if you're looking for something new and unique and think it will be a cool peripheral to have. I give the Razer Orb Weaver a B-. Thank you very much for watching this review the whole way through. I would appreciate it if you left a like rating on this video if you enjoyed watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. My name is David and I'll see you next video.